Now let us look at joint hypothesis. What have we done till now is that we are looking only at individual hypothesis up until now, where we looked at how uh, should we is 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 individually beta two hat significant or not, or is individually beta three hat significant or not, whatever. Now let's look at individually. No, sorry, not individually. Uh, jointly, a beta two or beta three significant or not. Okay, why do we want to do this? In our model, we want to test whether these whether these uh, 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 coefficients or whether these variables they are significant or not. Are they significantly adding anything to the model or not? In case if they are not adding, then what is the use of keeping them in the model themselves? So our our hypothesis is our null hypothesis is that beta two is equal to beta three equals to zero. Our alternative hypothesis is that either of them is not equal to zero. Okay, so if both of them or at least one of them is not equal to zero, you can reject your hypothesis, your null hypothesis that both of them are not significant. See, your null hypothesis is is targeting towards insignificance. Okay. If you are not able to reject your null hypothesis, it means that you are not able to say with the sufficient evidence that beta two is equal to beta three is not equal to zero. It means that they are insignificant, and you should be rejecting them. Okay. So, how do you test such kind of uh, such kind of restriction? So, what will you do is that uh, this is an unrestricted model, unrestricted model. Let me write it again, which is y t is equal to beta. One plus beta two x two t plus beta three x three t plus beta four x four t plus u t, and the restricted model is when your beta two and beta three both are equal to zero. This is your restricted model, which is beta one. Plus beta four x four t plus of course the error term is going to change because it is now also including the effect of these two omitted variables. So you're getting what I've done. I've just the I've just imposed this restriction that beta two equals to beta three equals to zero into this model which was unrestricted, which was a true model. Now I have put in the restriction here that beta two beta three is equal to zero. Fine. So what you do is that you estimate this unrestricted model. Hmm? You estimate unrestricted model, which is your U R, and you save residual sum of squares of unrestricted model. Clear? Similarly, you estimate. You estimate restricted model and save the residual sum of squares of restricted model. So you take up the difference between the RSS of the restricted model minus RSS of the unrestricted model. Okay. You you have to understand one thing. Supposedly, if the null hypothesis that is where beta two equals to beta three equals to zero, if this is true, in case if that is indeed true, then in that case, of course, when you impose the restriction, it should matter. Fine. And in case if this if if this beta two equals to beta three is equal to zero is false, then then. What should happen to residual sum of squares of the restricted model? It will increase, okay? Because you're not including this, because you're, you're omitting some variables. You're omitting x two t and x three t from your model, so that will be included in the errors, and it will blow up the residual sum of squares of the restricted model. Okay. Now, what is the distribution which will which this R S S R minus R S S U R will follow? Okay. So. well it depends in case if you divide this number if you if you divide this number 
by n minus k okay by number of restrictions sorry if you divide this number by the number of restrictions so how many restrictions we have here 2 beta 2 beta 3 equals to 0 and then divide it and then divide it by RSS U R by n minus k. k is the number of parameters to be estimated, n is the number of observations which you have. Then you have to understand this thing that this test statistic it will increase or it will be it is it is it will get bigger in case if RSS R is bigger and it will get smaller in case if RSS R is smaller. Okay. So, you are just normalizing it by dividing by these numbers. Okay. And remember this that this will follow F distribution. Okay. With the, with the number of restrictions for uh, this number of restrictions for numerator and n minus k for denominator degrees of freedom. Okay. So, this is what your what 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 is the background of the joint distribution. I will give you an example in the next recording. So, this is the background of the joint hypothesis.